Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about Earth's interior, the layers of the Earth. Okay, the Earth's interior has layers. Different layers exist from the surface of the Earth to its very center. Okay, and in this picture right here, it's like a cutout, a little piece of a pie from Earth going from the, the surface all the way down to the very center. Okay, the different layers formed because 4.5 billion years ago, when Earth was formed, most of it was in a fluid state. It was so hot that it was melted, and it was in a, it was all a fluid. It was liquid. Okay, it wasn't solid like it is, like the surface is today. All right. While Earth was cooling, heavier materials sank to the center, and lighter materials floated up to the surface of the Earth. It is because of this separation that Earth has layers okay so heavy materials sank to the center which is down here and the lighter materials floated up to the top I know most of y'all are familiar with what happens when you mix liquids of different densities okay like this picture here okay these were all different liquids that were poured together and then allowed to settle and what happens over time is they separate the denser ones or heavier ones are on the bottom the less dense or lighter ones are on the top Okay, so when Earth's interior was hot and liquid, materials with different densities separated into layers by density. Okay, the most dense ones sank to the bottom and the lightest ones floated to the top. All right, so now you should be able to answer questions one through three on your paper. All right, the three layers of Earth are the crust, the mantle, and the core. All right, and in the picture, crust is up here, this is the mantle, and then this would be the core. The core is actually divided into an inner and an outer core. We can tell these layers apart based on their chemical composition and the state of matter within each. That means whether it is a solid or a liquid. Okay, you should be able to answer questions four and five on your paper now. All right, now let's talk about the core. And on the picture, I have circled this part of the Earth. That would be the core. It's right here in the middle of this part of the picture. Um, the core is made up of very dense elements, such as iron and nickel. It begins about 2,900 kilometers below the surface, extending all the way to the very center of Earth, which is 6,400 kilometers below the surface. You should be able to answer questions six and seven on your paper now. Okay, the outer portion of the core is molten, which is another word for liquid. On the inner portion of the core is solid. The difference in state, that means one liquid and one solid, divides the core into two regions. The outer core is liquid, and the inner core is solid, all right? So the outer core, this gray part in the picture, is liquid, and the inner portion is solid, okay? Now, why is there a difference in these, all right? They're both very extremely hot, all right? The inner core is solid because at the center of the Earth, there's so much pressure, it's impossible for the iron in the core to melt. All right, I know that's hard to understand, but when you heat iron hot enough, it turns into a liquid, okay? And if you put it under so much pressure, because there's so many layers on top of it, I mean, all of this, all the rest of the earth is basically squishing it together, is so much pressure and, and, and there's so much weight on it that it cannot melt, all right? So why is the core so hot? Um, when Earth formed four and a half billion years ago, it was totally liquid because it was so hot. All right, everything was melted. And the core is still hot partially from the leftover heat from when Earth was formed four and a half billion years ago. And also because of friction from all of these different layers pressing down and the core kind of moves around inside there, the friction also keeps it hot, all right? 
So right now, you should be able to answer question 8 and 9 on your paper. Answer questions 8 and 9. All right, the next layer that we're going to talk about is the mantle. All right, and that's this layer that is circled right here, the mantle. It's this yellow and two orange layers right here. All right. Um, the mantle makes up the majority of Earth's volume. All right, that's 83% of the Earth's volume is mantle compared to only 16% for the core and only 1% of the Earth is the crust. All right. The mantle ranges from 40 to 2,900 kilometers below Earth's surface. So it's very thick. All right. Mantle is, it consists of elements of a medium density. Okay. They're not as dense as the elements in the core, but they're more dense than those in the crust. So that's why they're in the middle, because their density is medium. Okay. Um, you should be able to answer question 10 and 11 on your paper at this time. All right, we're going to continue talking about the mantle. The mantle is composed of rocks known as silicates. Silicates, it's this word right here, silicates. The main elements in silicates are silicon and oxygen. Silicates in the mantle can include heavier elements like magnesium and iron. The state of matter within the mantle is mostly solid, but it varies depending on the depth in the mantle. Okay, so it's, it's mostly a solid. You should be able to answer question 12 and 13 on your paper now. All right, the uppermost layer of the mantle is called the lithosphere and it includes the crust. Lithosphere, which means rocky ball in Greek, is completely solid. All right. So the uppermost layer of the mantle, this right here, okay, it's solid and it's called the lithosphere and it means rocky ball in Greek. You should be able to answer questions 14 and 15 on your paper now. All right. Just below the lithosphere is the asthenosphere. Okay. I know that's hard to say. Asthenosphere. And the asthenosphere means weak ball in Greek. All right. It's this layer right here. The asthenosphere has the physical properties of a solid, but it's a bit squishy, like silly putty or play doh. All right. It is a solid, but it's squishy. Okay, you should be able to answer questions 16, 17, and 18 on your paper now. Okay, because the asthenosphere is squishy, it can move very slowly over time like a thick liquid. It's kind of like uh, putty or Play-Doh. You can move it but it is still a solid, all right? This squishy characteristic is known as plasticity, all right? Plasticity means it is squishy and it can move, but it's still a solid. We can say that the, lith the asthenosphere has plasticity, all right? You should be able to answer a question 19, 20, and 21 on your paper at this time. The plasticity in the asthenosphere allows the plates of the crust to move very slowly over time. The movements of the crust plates causes earthquakes. Okay, so because the asthenosphere has plasticity, it allows the lithosphere, the solid plates of the crust, it allows them to move. All right, they don't move very fast, but they actually move very suddenly in certain places and those sudden shifts we call earthquakes all right so you should be able to answer um, question 22 on your paper now please answer question 22 all right now let's talk about the crust the very top layer of earth is the crust all right and the crust is very thin 
when we compare it to the other layers of the of the earth all right so the crust is up here it's very thin compared to the rest of the layers of earth all right we have um you should be able to answer oh wait hang on the earth crust is either a continental crust where the surface is land so continents are continental crust all right or there's also oceanic crust where the surface is under the where the crust is under the ocean that's oceanic crust all right um you can answer number 23 on your paper right now answer number 23 all right um, oceanic crust is relatively thin it's about five kilometers thick and it's dense since it's made up of heavy igneous rocks and it's also dense because it formed under the weight of all the water in the ocean so it's very dense okay and heavy okay continental crust is thicker where continental crust is is where there's continents it can be 25 to 70 kilometers thick but it's less dense since it's made up of many different types of rocks all right it's like sedimentary metamorphic and igneous and they're lighter than the igneous rocks that we find in the oceanic crust all right you should be able to answer number 24 on your paper now okay on average earth's crust is only 40 kilometers thick which is extremely thin when we compare to the rest of the core of the mantle uh, most of the rocks in the crust are made up of lighter elements such as silicates combined with aluminum, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So there's all kind of elements uh, in the crust. It has very little iron, only about 6%, when compared to the rest of the earth has 35% iron, especially in the core. Right. Um, you can answer... Um, you should be able to answer num well, hang on um, each layer in earth has a unique combination of composition thickness and state liquid versus solid and we can model these different characteristics okay with an egg all right you can model these different characteristics with an egg all right you can answer um, number 25 on your paper now all right when we use an egg to represent the earth's interior the shell represents the crust okay the shell can represent the crust and the lithosphere can be represented by the shell which is the crust and also that little membrane that's right underneath the shell okay the egg white the white part of the egg that can represent the mantle and the top part of that would be the asthenosphere, right? And then the yolk, the yellow part, represents the core. And sometimes you notice an egg yolk kind of has different layers in it. The darker yellow in the center would be the inner core, and then the lighter yellow around the outside of it would be the outer core. All right. Now you should be able to answer the rest of the questions in your paper. Um, number 26, 27, and 28.